Alright guys, so continuing from last time's video, what we got was a system that detects every single uh, possibility, we already have that, and will pretty much add up the rows and columns for us. Now what we need to do is we need to expand on this in order to be able to detect the specific winning condition. That should be pretty straightforward. So what we need to do is the following. First, we need to add up a summation system to add up how many of each number there is. Um, in the case of the of the types here, this array, basically, to know if you have a flush, you just need to have a 5. Now, considering that the maximum, absolute maximum number of cards you can have is seven. The n the number of fives, the number five that are available, are very very limited. In this case, if you get a five, you only get it in one place. Now, why is this important? Well, for example, in this section, if you want to get a pair, you can have up to three pairs, right? Because you have seven cards, a pair is two cards, so obviously you can have three pairs. Uh, so you can have a two pair and a pair and still have some leftover uh, card. So what we need to do is take the array four and first detect a five. Once we detect a five, I would like those five to be isolated. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the sum of any one column. Now, if the sum is equal to, so if this sum is equal to 5. What do we do? We're going to have to do a couple things. If it is equal to 5, first we need to know the type. The type will be encoded in the i right here. So this is the type. Uh, the type will be either 0, 1, 2, or 3, indicating our 4, 4 cards. 0, 1, 2, or 3. Now, if we do plus 1 to that, then if we get a value of 0, absolute 0, that means that it did not work, right? So what I'm going to do is I take my i, I'm going to add a 1 to it, so that now I have kind of a guaranteed system that will guarantee me a win or not. So if this is equal to 5, if that is true, Okay, let me make this a little bigger here. There. So, if this is equal to 5, in the event that it is equal to 5, send out whatever it is. Otherwise, please send a 0. Very straightforward. Um, this, I will need it to come out. Also, adding to the complexity of this, I'm going to disable indexing. And I'm going to create a conditional terminal. Conditional terminal pretty much implies that if this is true, it will basically stop checking. So if we do indeed find a, uh, a 5, I want you to stop checking for 5s. This, I no longer need it. All I need is this number to tell me whether something was found or not. That's it. This zero will tell me if there is a flush or not. And it will tell me the type of the flush automatically. So let's run it. In this case, there is no flush. I can clearly see there is no flush. In order to get a flush, I will need another spade. And let's pick another number just in case. There we go. So now, I should get a 5 when this is completed its processing. There we go, I have a flush, flush value 1 means spades. Uh, so this works. Now, this flush, I'm not sure if we need the highest card or not. Um, I'm going to, for the time being, what I will do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and check online and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so apparently the official rules say that yes, the high, highest card in a flush wins. Therefore, if we do have a flush, we need to now 
flush out the highest card. Now, according to the rules, the winner is the one that has the highest, uh, the highest flush card. Now, I'm not sure. So, if two people have the same highest, then you go on down the list to the one after that, and then to the one after that, and then to the one after that. Um, the thing is that I'm trying to figure out right now is that the highest flush card to be uh, thought of should be the flush that is in your hand. That is a very key word. It is the flush in the hand, not the flush on the table. So why is this important? The reason that this is important is because the flush on the table is the same for everybody. If you have a flush, then your winning piece of that flush is based on the high card in your hand. Now, seeing as if we think of this logically, right? So you need five. Uh, the first three or four could be here. Uh, if all five are on the table, Right? That means there is a flush on the table. That is a very interesting question. I'm going to go ahead and look up what happens if the flush is on the table, not in your hand. So, as I expected, basically you go with the best five card combination, irrelevant of anything else. So basically, if you have a flush, you're going to have to get the highest card, I'm going to say, in your hand. If you do not have a card in your hand, I'm going to count it as a uh, zero and therefore, well, we'll figure it out from there. So the next thing we need to do now is get the highest card in your hand. Therefore, we need to figure out what card is in your hand and what card is on the table. So this is a very, very interesting concept that I need to incorporate here. In a normal case, let's take a normal case where let's pretend your hand has two spades and I'm going to process the data as if we are processing it in your hand, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go back here to try to analyze what this means. Initially, what we have done, ignoring the definition of cards, what we have done down here is we have considered a system and we're trying to figure out how it works. Let's say we have gotten to, let's go ahead and assume we're at the river, last possible combo. Now on the river, the player has seven cards, obviously, each, each player has seven cards. Now when predicting my, being the player's, odds, when performing this, I would need to basically, I have all cards known. The only cards I would like to consider are the cards in my hand. The cards in my hand are all the way, linked all the way back here. And it's those two that I would like to consider for, for this high. Now, this is a pretty intense problem which I believe the way to handle it will be in a post-processing of what the highest card is. Now, if we are processing this for the other player, right? So the other player, we will basically be creating a pre-deck scenario based on the table and we will be adding to that the two cards from his hand, best represented here. So basically, for the other player in a river, he has five cards. These two are going to be the two cards we are predicting that this person is holding in his or her hand. Right? This is something that I need to, I did not consider. So for example, here, now that I'm looking at this, there's four cards on the table. We need to predict for the other at least two cards in his hand, right? Not one, two in his hand 
which will tell, give us a total of a six card prediction. I did not see this before. This is very important. So here, when we're dealing with a four, or even here when we're dealing with a two, now that I think of it, this here must be a two plus one kind of system, where we're going to be predicting two cards for his hand and one card for the river. Here, we are going to be doing a, two, a four, which will be, in essence, a two plus two. And this is going to be very hard to work with, very, very difficult to do a two plus two, uh, because we don't want any overlap to occur. So this will create a, a huge amount of possibilities. Um, we will, we probably can go ahead and handle this system later. But this is a very interesting thing to consider. Right now, going back to the river. So when you're dealing with the player, my two hand cards are easily known. So let's write the note for player, two hand cards known. This is in river. Let me put that here, here, in river. No, actually, that is not in, in river. Always, for player, two hand cards known. For computer, two hands random. So there we for not computer, for other. So we might want to handle this system in a different way, which means that now here, we may need to, in this deck, we may need to alter something in order to adjust for everything that I just discussed, meaning that the pre-deck created, we will have a pre-deck for you, which includes your hand, and a pre-deck that does not include your hand. That is very interesting. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to do this, so this two-card combo will pretty much always include the hand. Adding a card to this two will need to will need to be unconflicting with these two-card combos. So a three-card combo may actually not be needed if I am thinking about this correctly. So uh, I'm going to need to rethink the strategy here as we said so there's no actual three it's simply a two plus one but this one will need to enter into each one of the threes right if you guys know what i mean so for every hand combo you're gonna have a huge set of third card options um which is actually what is given in a three card combo that's exactly what a three card combo does yet the big difference is that we need to separate the way this system works because what we need to consider now is that these two need to be accessible separate from this one. So uh, adding a lot of complication on how this works. Therefore, uh, in order to do this, we're going to have to come back and do some editing. Um, I will work on this editing in the next episode, I believe. So we did just, I know we barely did anything this episode, but this is going to be a drastic change to the way that we do things. So I will handle it in the next episode. See you guys then.